have Dr. Mohan here with me. Uh, she, of course, you know her from the landing coverage. Hey, uh, Doc. But, how uh, are you? I'm doing very well, Mr. President. I just Thank want you, you for, to know. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Are you kidding me? What an honor this is. This is an incredible honor. And it's amazing. Indian of descent Americans are taking over the country. You, my vice president, my speechwriter, Vanai, I tell you what, but thank you. You guys are incredible. Did you want to say something? I'll be, I'll be quiet. Uh, you know, absolutely, Swati. I mean, you know, tell us how you felt on landing day and, and actually what path brought you to, to here at the lab. Absolutely. So my path actually started way back when I was a child watching my first episode of Star Trek. In addition to those fantastical scenes of space, what really captured my attention was this really close-knit team who was working together, manipulating this technological marvel with the sole purpose of exploring space and understanding new things and seeking new life. You know, Perseverance is my first mission at JPL where I've gotten to work from the very beginning of formulation all the way through operations. And it's made me feel like I was part of that crew, being able to work with this incredibly diverse, talented team that has become like a family, spending years creating our own technological marvel has been a privilege. You know, those last days and weeks leading up to landing day, it was pretty smooth, but we were all still really nervous and frankly terrified until we got through those final seven minutes. To be able to call touchdown safely, to see those first images come back from Mars, to see the place where we had never been able to go to on Mars before, and go there, reach there for the express purpose of seeking out new life, just made it feel like I was living in a dream. Now that that tremendous relief has passed for the team of being able to be there safely, all that's left is the excitement and the thrill of all the scientific discoveries that are yet to come of what Perseverance can actually find and hopefully find those signs of past life on Mars. Well, I tell you what, you said you feel like you live in a dream. You've created a dream for millions and millions of young kids, young Americans. You talk about STEM. You, you, it was, look, the thing that I found so exhilarating about this, you all did this, the whole team, the team I, I can see now and the entire team at JPL. What you did, you restored a dose of confidence in the American people. They're beginning to wonder about us. They're beginning to wonder, are we still the country we always believed we were? You guys did it. You guys gave a sense of America's back. It's, a, it's astounding what you did. You should not underestimate it. You should not underestimate it. You know, you did it the most American way. You believed in science. You believed in hard work, and you believed it wasn't a darn thing you couldn't do if you put your minds together. One of the reasons why we're such an incredible country is we're such a diverse country. We bring the best out of every single solitary culture in the world, here in the United States of America. And we give people an opportunity to let their, let, let, let their dreams run forward. And you, you just — I can't tell you how much, uh, you know, uh, Everyone was so down the last years about, is America still the, the, you know, the font of change? And are we still the country that has hopes and develops and pursues the most unlikely things to happen? And we are. And you all demonstrated it. I'm not being — look, I'm not I, — I really mean this. It's so much bigger than landing perseverance on Mars. It's about the American spirit, and you brought it back. You brought it back in a moment we so desperately needed. I was reaching — I was talking to a head of state who was calling me about thanking me — or not thanking me, congratulating me on becoming president. And then I later heard from another head of state saying, America's changed so much, they, they, they used to be so competent. 
to do great things. And here they can't even deal with the coronavirus. Look how badly organized they are. That was said by a head of state. And America, image in the world, and it matters. It matters because democracies have to demonstrate they can run as efficiently and more efficiently than autocracies. There's a big battle going on. Your kids are going to be studying about when democracy once again reestablished it could do anything as opposed to autocracies that can just command things. I just, I just can't tell you how much I believe historians are going to write about what you did at the moment you all did it. At the moment you all did it. You should take such great pride, such great pride in what you did. We can land a rover on Mars. We can beat a pandemic. And uh, with science, hope, and vision, there's not a damn thing we can't do as a country. We have never, ever, ever failed to meet a goal. We've set our mind to it, and we've done it together. And that's what you all showed. So it goes way beyond, way beyond the whole notion of what you just recently did. And God only knows what is going to come from this. God only knows what's going to happen. But you all are incredible. All the dreams you've created in other people's minds, other young kids. I tell you what, I just wanted to thank you and tell you, you know, you, it just seems that, you know, we're on the side of the angels just at the moment when things look like they're really dark in America over our history. Something has come along. Something has come along. And you guys came along, and you did this. And so I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, tell you how presumptuous of me to say I'm proud of you, but I am so proud of you. And, uh, and uh, Mike, the teamwork that still exists there, the importance of it, the consequence of what you're doing, and it's only just a start. I had a group of folks in my office not too long ago, House and Senate members, I mean, House members, Democrats and Republicans talking about infrastructure. And I have in the, in, in the, in the shelf in, in my Oval Office a moon rock. And they walked over and said, this is actually a moon rock from the moon? And I jokingly said, you ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till you see what comes home from Mars. So anyway, folks, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're great Americans, and you're demonstrating it. There's not a thing we cannot do when we set our mind to it. Well, God bless you all. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very, very much, Mr. And President. by the way, I'm like a poor relative, Mike. When I'm invited, I show up. So be careful. You know, the poor relatives, they show up. Uh, we will. <laughs> they stay longer than they're supposed to. I'm one of those kind of guys. Uh, we will be more than happy to have you. As, to stay as long as you want. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in person. Thank we'll, we'll you. Get you an office here. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye bye. Godspeed. Thank you, sir.